welcome to Macro Theory Builder of Worlds. And now for something completely different. This is a full scale interior design build. Mm hmm. Oh, yes. This is a little different to most things that I do because most things that I do, of course, we know are in oh, 28 to 40 millimeter kind of stuff. This build. Um, is a little different. I've been make, waiting some time for, to be able to actually put this video together. This is a project some of you might know that I was involved with uh, that ran from kind of like January of 2021 all the way through actually until August. This video uh, is going to kind of document my involvement in the, the design and uh, installation for a place called Time and Space. An absolutely fantastic space uh, in Battlesbridge in Essex that is going to be used for um, educational experiences for adults with additional needs and then is also um, a space that can be uh, hired for functions. Um, it's a very very cool place with a very very steampunky theme. If you're a viewer of my channel uh, because you are into boroughs and badgers, this is a place that I'm hoping that we're going to hold a boroughs and badgers event uh, early in 2022. And who knows, I might do other stuff there as well. Be a really cool place for a Necromunda event as well. So, a little bit about the place. Um, at the end, in the end of January 2021, uh, I was contacted by a lady I know through a number of um, autistic support groups in Essex. I've done some workshops uh, for her, for one of the groups she runs for uh, girls with autism, uh, model making. That's what I do. Um, and uh, this lady and her partner were um, looking at, at this big space, this venue, this room, uh, at a place called the Mousery in Battlesbridge. And uh, I was contacted because, in this case, they knew that I was into um, making models and steampunk. And the client, my uh, acquaintance's partner, uh, Carol, um, she had discovered steampunk on holiday in New Zealand a few years ago um, because the Kiwis are mad bonkers for steampunk even more than the Brits are and um, she really fancied having this room made with a steampunk theme I think it's such a cool cool idea Carol's job is working with adults with additional needs and the conversations that we had it became really clear that the problem sometimes working with these folk is that they are often expected to work in drab uninspiring clinical kind of like centers which makes the whole experience very difficult for everybody carol already has one uh, place uh, a cafe in south end um, which is all based around a tea theme and is a really lively exciting place to go and have a cup of tea or to go for different activities and she wanted to do something very similar with this new build but wanted something steampunk the problem is, is they, as they both said to me, was that they've spoken to builders and decorators, neither of whom had much of a clue what they were talking about. Could I come on along and have a look at this place and just chuck some ideas around with them? That's exactly what I did. These uh, images um, are what we're looking at. It's a very funky uh, room, about 11 metres by about 11 metres. Oh, it's just off square but um, a big space with these great rows of double windows um, as soon as I walked in it kind of screamed porthole airship submarine kind of aesthetic um, so my work my company was doing very little work at that point because thanks to the pandemic all our school work had closed down all the heritage work had closed down so I was very much uh, at a bit of a loose end. Um, I was obviously making videos for this channel, quite a few, having a great time, but I was kind of like stuck from an actual work point of view. And although this wasn't going to initially throw up an enormous amount of work in actual time from a creativity point of view and a sitting down and actually involving different people and do something on a grand scale, the opportunity was too good to miss. So I went away and I drew these pictures. Um, 
Carol was kind of like pretty um, free on her thoughts. She wanted something steampunky. She wanted a thing in the middle of the ceiling and fancied a big world map on the wall when you walked in through the door. Everything else was very much a case of, okay, what can you come up with? And this is what I came up with. You can see there are uh, a design for each wall. Uh, the main feature wall, I kind of fancied this big Victorian map of the world. Um, and there we could have some furniture and we could go with some fake book panels on the wall, make it look like a Victorian library. I already had a kind of Nemo-esque kind of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea kind of vibe going on. Okay, so this is the map wall at the back of the room for the moment. Those doors aren't going to be there. That wall is going to be completely covered with a stud wall with soundproofing. So that is pretty much what I drew. Um, and <laughs> the, uh, the folks doing it are getting very excited already. Look, they've already bought themselves some furniture, which actually will go really nicely. Sat facing the map would be really cool. Um, so map in the middle to work all the way across um, I'll send you measurements for that uh, but that's where we're going to go so I'm, I'm thinking the, the map dead in the center there then as a stand in the room we then got this is one side you can see these epic windows which I want a porthole over the top of all of those um, we're talking rivets and studs on these columns uh, which are going to be quite cool. The ceiling its structure is pretty much going to stay the same. We'll be able to uh, decorate with that. Now, this back wall, which is where the entrance is, that's where the entrance is coming from, um, is going to change slightly where it says girls' toilet over there. That door's going. Um, so that's all going to be completely flat. That is a door on the right-hand side into the kitchen, so we're going to have an area outside of that um, with uh, kitchen units and bits and pieces and extension to the galley. So the plan at the moment for the back wall is only funky design to kind of like echo the wall that's now behind me. And then across here, we've got this other wall with the potential with those four windows over there all boarded in, we can put something solid in there. Talked about having different areas in the room that would have a slightly different feel to it. We really like the idea of having a kind of apothecary come science lab in one corner. Um, and Carol is a very keen diver, so diving we thought would make quite a cool kind of like feature as well. Okay, so this is what we're starting with. The builder is in at the moment getting rid of surfaces we don't want the various other bits and pieces. So this is going to be where we're working. Big installation. I've never done a full size installation before. Most of you know me for. 28 millimeter installations, this is going to be full size, full scale. They're terribly exciting. I'll keep you posted. All right, so early progress. It doesn't look much. We've worked out where the galley units are going for the galley. Um, we've got books, loads of books painted, and we're starting to work on getting the bookcase covered. Done, they're gonna look really, really cool. Back wall now needs painting. Um, yeah, early days, but um, it's gonna be pretty cool. There's a lot of work to do here. Now there was no way I was gonna be able to make this thing work by myself. I had to bring in other people. Top of the list was my business partner, John, because he's going to come up with, with power tools and doing things in a big scale. Uh, for our work stuff, I make small models and he makes the flight cases and various other bits and pieces. And we work really closely together um, and bounce ideas off each other. is really cool. All right, this is uh, Mousery coming on. Grey walls, galley nearly in, painting, painting. That's Carol, it's her gig. Um, my wife Heidi over there sorting out straps, rivets, John's wife Jen painting conduits. Bit of a mess in a minute. Coming on. One of the very first things I'm doing from a fitting point of view, and I'm making this up as I go along, is an entrance. Because the entrance looked really, really shoddy, and what I'm doing is I'm recycling the polycarbon walls that were in the Lose originally 
We're using all that plastic and we're going to use a whole bunch of 3D printed bolts and we're going to turn this into bolted metal section at the front around the front door which is going to look pretty cool so right from the get-go rather than it looking like shonky plasterboard which it was before we're going to make sure that we, it all gets it's got a real look right from the go uh, progress then <laughs> well it's a lot of grey where there used to be and we've got stuff that's starting to happen but um it's the galley units in loads of things painted <sighs> difficult to see where the progress is at a minute but there is progress <sighs> Okay, update today. Today is uh, Wednesday. This is really the second week of the kind of light installation, but only the first one, first week where we've had everything in. Progress this week. Our sideboard, that's where our AV gear is going to go. Well pleased with that. Galley is nearly done. That's the uh, various panels going on the bar. Um, they're not secured yet, but they're coming on. Got to make sure they're all right, but that's cool. And a panel over the back. It's going to be a control panel above that. Got to cut uh, events in there. Submarine door, just finishing off detailing. Gonna go in the entrance way there, which is starting to look very snazzy if you're into gold. Um, Grey paint on the wall there. Ceiling getting painted. Stacks of stuff waiting to get a second coat of paint and start to do lick and stick and putting on the walls. Um, so we are making progress. Um, gold girders on the floor and things to go in the entrance area as well. Just stuff absolutely everywhere, but um, yeah, coming on. And then for the uh, map and the diving suit, I had to speak to uh, a reenactment and heritage friend of mine, a guy called Abs, who is nuts bonkers uh, and just super, super creative. He has made uh, replicas of Bugatti sports cars and replicas of uh, World War One biplanes uh, and World War One tanks and all sorts of other bits and pieces too. I just totally knew he'd be the right guy to get onto the map and the diving suit. Um, and so we sat down and got our, put our heads together and this is what we could come up with. Right. One of my favourite things in the whole place is the bookcase over by the map. The map's really cool. The lighting effects on the map's really cool. The dive is really cool. I love the kitchen. But the bookcase was just planned to be a set of uh, fake books on a set of little fake shelves just sticking out from the wall. And it was John, my business partner, who said, well, one of the problems they've got here is they haven't got any storage at all. What if we make the bookcase into a proper bookcase that opens up? and becomes a table store, uh, which I thought was way cool. Um, I also said to him, well, uh, uh, can you do that? Have you ever done that before? Uh, to which his answer was no. Um, I've never done it before, but we're gonna have a good go. And uh, you should check out the cupboard. It's absolutely epic.
this was an absolute monster task for my 3D printers. We printed a thousand rivet heads and 700 bolt heads um, that we could use around the room. We did use most of them. The rivet heads are printed in 30 and 20 millimeter. The bolt heads are uh, a decent size too. So a lot of the strapping down the side of the walls is actually MDF with rivets on, but we've also used vac form plastic um, panels in some places that you can see that give us this real kind of cool submarine. All the floor had to come out. The floor was a bit contentious, um, and <laughs> there was quite a lot of to and fro with the floor. But the floor looks great. Uh, a laminated floor looks like the wooden deck of the whole vessel as well. We changed our minds about a number of different things as we went along. Um, we, the whole room has become more sensory. Over on the right hand side you can see the uh, wall, the divider down that side there. That was going to be three separate areas and now it's only two. Um, there's a, a large divider there and recessed into that are LED based bubble tubes. Uh, because it's a really cool thing to light up the area, that area there and that's the, our apothecary area. Um, we extended the kind of like the build. Uh, in the original build, there was nothing in the entrance way at all in the in the, the the hallway in the lobby. So that all got done too, as did the um, the outside of the front doors. On the walls, uh, you can see that there are a number of really cool steampunk images. Really large, big ones. Um, initially, that was going to be one, which is the uh, submarine on the wall over there, the Triton, which is what we are in. Um, that was produced by another friend of mine, a guy called Ben Shilato, who does all my artwork for my business uh, and he jumped to the chance of doing some big steampunk images. So he ended up doing the steampunk image of the submarine on the wall over there in the AV corner. Uh, he also did uh, a great big uh, airship and the witches on the wall in the kitchen. Check this out. And he even did uh, a view of London in 1999 as seen from 1899, which is pretty cool too. <laughs> that ended up in the new and improved facilities uh, for those who wish to relieve themselves. Then, to cap it all, along with all the fantastic uh, scenery that's gone in, um, Abs put in this amazing 10 foot by 7 foot map of the world, hand drawn, hand painted map of the world covering all sorts of uh, Victoriana kind of things, uh, routes around and places to visit and all sorts of bits and pieces for you to sit and look at and stare at uh, and enjoy. And also he created from scratch the diving suit, the steampunk diving suit that's on display as well with imported helmets and, and uh, handmade lead weights for the boots and the, the belts all sorts of other bits and pieces. So much fun, fantastic. We've got extra diving helmets there that have been turned into lamps on the sides as well. And then on top of that, uh, we used a company called Illuminate Design, who John has also worked with before in the past, um, to help us with the lights. Lights up in the roof uh, to give us light, sound activated lights that work with a fantastic PA system that has gone in so we can uh, play music, have light activated, sound activated lighting in there too for functions. 
two water effect lights were put on the both the map and on the diver that adds the real sense of atmosphere in the room they look fantastic greens and blues there really cool and light on the map this map with these lights is one of my favorite things in the world right now and we also have put in um, a huge 10 foot wide um, projector screen and there's a projector in the ceiling too so home cinema big film events going and watching 20,000 leagues under the sea or in fact it, there are some photos here of us watching labyrinth uh, sleepy hollow and others while we were trying out different bits and pieces This is time and space. A space that I was commissioned to design, build, decorate, complete with the aid of Stephen Abbs Wisdom and John Terrace. In the first instance, it's a space that will be used to work with adults with additional needs. The lady who commissioned the design says that far too often that kind of person ends up working in places which are tired and depressing and clinical and dreary. She wanted a space that was lively and engaging. And then the space will also be used for events, product launches, steampunk weddings, other cool kind of activities. Abs provided the amazing diver. Incredible Victorian explorer's map of the world. John Terrace built amazing things like the bookcase while I did the books. I helped Abs, John between them, built this fantastic divide where we put bubble tubes in. I just painted and stuck things on pointed things where they should go. Ben Shilato produced three amazing bits of original artwork. This is the Triton, the submarine we're on. He also did an airship and a view of London in 1999, as viewed from 1899. It's quite an extraordinary space. I can't wait to see it filled and see people using it. I'm really, really delighted and pleased that I had the opportunity to do this. This is without a doubt the biggest Magrathea Builder of Worlds project. Really quite a cool one.
So this has been a pretty big build. I've got to say, I don't think I'll necessarily be jumping and doing lots of other interior design kind of work. Um, it was pretty stressful at times. It didn't all come together as quickly as I wanted to. That's because I have zero experience of doing it for real. I hate DIY at home, let alone going somewhere else and doing it. I'm all right if I'm painting a 28 millimeter house, but painting my own living room, forget it, I'm gonna play somebody else. I did discover various things about the building business and what we call the trades. Mostly the people who are in the trade love to go shopping an awful lot and they never seem to be there when you want them to be. But we did get it all done. We've got great light features, fantastic looking floor, very handy kitchen, um, brilliant AV system um, and all this really cool funky looking stuff. So I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to continue my relationship with Carol and Andrea, the ladies who run Time and Space, and be able to use it and invite gamers along at some point to come and play there as well, because I cannot think of a better venue for some kind of gaming tournament. I'm going to have to get my Victoriana scenery down there and do an End of Empire shoot down there, because it, it would just look absolutely epic. So check out some more of Time and Space. If you are in this part of the world, if you're in the south of England and you want the, a, a great place to go and have an alternative kind of function, family gathering, if you're a steampunk, um, then you need to check out the Time and Space website, which is described in, a uh, link is in the description down below. Um, if you fancy joining me for the Burrows and Badgers tournament, you need to get in contact with me as well. I really enjoyed this kind of like project. I'm really pleased that Carol and Andrea asked me to do it because um, I would never have had the opportunity to do it otherwise and it was it was a really cool thing. It came along at the perfect time in the middle of the pandemic which kind of like kept me ticking over and was, I was able to do some creative stuff and go and get my hands on a little bit as well while we employed other people to do some of the heavy lifting which is quite cool. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm really delighted with the outcome and I'm pretty sure that uh, Carol is as well. Um, so from that point of view, Carol and Andrea, thanks for putting your trust in me and my wacky designs. Um, massive, massive thanks to Abs and John for actually helping me pull it off because I could never have done it out without you guys. Uh, Andrew at Illuminated Design for all the cool stuff. Uh, my wife Heidi and John's wife Jen and my kids who chipped in and came and volunteered and painted things, all sorts of other stuff. Um, couldn't have done it without you as well. And Dean Alan Jones as well, who contributed various steampunky things. I'm still hoping to get a couple of bits of him, light switches and stuff too. So, to all of those people, thank you very much. Do check out Time and Space on Facebook and their website. If you fancy having an event there, do get in touch with them because it will be a really cool thing to do. I certainly am proud to be, have been involved with Time and Space and uh, going forward I certainly hope to roll a few dice down there and film the odd thing too. So, I don't know what's going to be the next video for Magathea Builder Woods. Worlds, I don't know how I'm going to possibly follow that. Oh, apart from the fact that I'm still working on my last latest Patreon build uh, for Andy Tilly and the Wasteland, um, Fallout Wasteland kind of uh, diner. Um, that's underway as well. But uh, for the moment, thanks for joining me in Magathea Builder Worlds. I'll see you next time.